Hello. Today we're working on uh, chapter functions, the chapter named functions, and it's the sixth activity called slotted stairways in the Learn to Code 1 uh, book. So uh, this one is called slotted stairways, and uh, if we, it's, it's going to be some more practice here using these ideas where we build one function out of other functions that either someone else has written or we have written. Okay, so this idea of nesting one function call within another function. All right, it's a very powerful feature we found out last time. So today uh, we've got here a puzzle and we've got a little bit of code written for us here. There's a function called collect gem and turn around. Let's not worry about what it does for right now. Collect gem and turn around. We can think this is probably some abstract idea where Byte's going to go collect a gem and come back to where he is, maybe. Uh, and then there's a function here called solve row. Again, let's not worry about that, what that is right now, but presumably that's going to solve one row of the puzzle. Okay. Down at the bottom in our main program here, all we're going to do is call solve row. All right. So solve row. The only thing it does is call collect gem turn around. Collect gem turn around is a function up here. Okay, so this is again an example of that thing where we're writing a function called solve row, and it calls a function we wrote called collect gem and turn around. And collect gem turn around calls uh, a bunch of these commands that uh, byte comes with. Okay. All right. So let's call solve row here and let's run it and see what solve row does at this point. At this point it only calls collect gem turn around. So really what we're doing is we're seeing what collect gem turn around does. All right. So let's run this. Byte walks up the stairs. He moves forward twice. He collects the gem. He turns around. He moves forward two times and he stops. Okay. Okay, so that's apparently what collect gem turn around does. Whatever byte just did there was a move forward, a move forward, a collect gem, a turn around, which is a turn left and a turn left, and then a move forward, move forward. So he's back at where he started from, but he's facing the other way. Okay, so solve row, what we'd really like to do probably in solve row, we need to add some code to this so that byte actually solves a row, which means he collects all the gems in a row. Okay, and looking at this, at this point here, it looks like if we were to call collect gem turn around again, he would move forward to collect the gem, turn left, turn left, or turn around, and move forward twice and come back to where he is. And that would complete the uh, solving of this row. So let's go ahead and fix solve row so that it does the whole row by adding another collect gem and turn around. Okay, let's run this again to make sure that solve row does exactly what we think and solves this whole first row. Okay, byte heads up to, collects the gem, turns around, heads down to. Then byte moves forward to, collects the gem, turns around and moves forward to. Okay. So that does indeed solve a row and byte ends up facing this way here. Okay. So now we're left to see what do we have to do to solve this whole puzzle. Okay. We're quite a bit of the way there. We've got a nice function called solve row, which if we can get to uh, sort of the middle part of this puzzle, on different rows each time, and we can call solve row, then uh, we will have uh, this taken care of because we can solve the row next to us using the solve row function, and we can solve the row next to it using the solve row function. Okay. All right. So, how should we get over there? Well, um, the other question is, does it matter which way we're facing when we call solve row? I don't think it does, uh, but if it does, we can just, uh, we, can, we can figure that out later. 
Okay, so really what we want to do here is uh, one idea would be after we solve this row, we can just turn Byte around and make him turn the corner here so that he heads up the stairs to do the other, uh, the next row next to him. Okay, so that is just a uh, turn right, then move forward, then turn right again. Uh, but that seems familiar to me. I think, I think a little while ago we wrote a function that's like, you know, turn corner to the right or something like that in one of our previous activities. Let's look back. It wasn't here. Let's look back one more. Yes, there it is. Turn corner to the right. All right, and we, we, you know, made a guess that we might want to use a function like this somewhere in the future. And sure enough, I think this would be a good time where we can find this useful. So I'm going to select it, copy it. I'm going to move over into uh, our slotted stairways uh, activity. And let's go ahead and paste this up at the top. Uh, no, actually, let's paste it right into here. Right before we solve this, let's paste the function in here. Okay, so turn corner to the right. Uh, all it does is it turns right, it moves forward, and it turns right again, which will get byte onto the next row. Okay, so let's just call our turn corner to the right, and then let's call solve row for this row. Let's see what happens here. Okay, Byte's going to solve the row he's on. Calling collect gem and turn around, then calling collect gem and turn around again. When he comes back here, he's going to be facing the way he was originally. Now we're going to call our turn corner to the right and solve this row that he's on. He's going to move forward to collect the gem, turn around, and go back. And he's calling collect gem, turn around again, where he moves forward, collects the gem, turns around, and goes back. Okay, nice. So we've got two rows solved. And now what does Byte need to do? So if Byte turns a corner to the right, he's going to go back to the row he was on before. That's no good. What we'd really like him to do is to turn left, move forward, and turn left again, or turn corner to the left. Okay, so let's go get our function turn corner to the left. We wrote one of those uh, a couple times ago. Here it is, turn corner to the left. Copy it. Paste it in here. Okay, and now after solve row, we can just turn corner to the left and then solve the last row that we're on here. Okay, let's say run my code. I'm going to solve the first row. Turn corner to the right. Solve this row. And when he comes up here, he's going to turn corner to the left. Solve the last row. And remember, solve row is just composed of two. Collect gem turn around function call calls. Okay, he did it. All right. Yeah, so the main idea here is we use decomposition to break a problem down into 
small little pieces, little pieces, and then we handle that by writing functions for each of those. So we noticed that there could be a, uh, this was actually given to us, that uh, one function called collect gem and turn around will just move byte forward to collect a gem and then move byte back down to. Okay, uh, but to solve a whole row, we need to call collect gem turn around twice to solve each row. And once we have that solve row function, we actually went back and got some functions that we wrote earlier called turn corner to the right and turn corner to the left, which helped us get over to adjacent rows, rows that are next to us. Okay, and our code reads really nice now in our main program. We can just think of these ideas as really abstract ideas like solve a row, then turn a corner to the right, solve that row, then turn a corner to the left so that we're on a new row and solve that row. Okay? Anybody who looks at this program really could sort of, you know, at a, at a really high level understand uh, what the main idea of the program is. We're going to solve three rows and in the middle of them we're going to turn corners to get to those other rows. Okay? All right. Again, this idea of creating a uh, creating a function uh, that's made out of other functions or calls to other functions. Some of them we wrote, some of them we didn't. Is called procedural composition. We are composing new procedures out of smaller, more detailed procedures. Okay. In this case, we created a pr procedure called solve row that was a composite of collect gem and turn around, which itself uh, was made up of calls to other functions inside there, move forwards, turn lefts, and so on. All right. Good job, everybody. We'll see you next time.